Good afternoon. I'm Cheryl McCormick. I'm the executive director at the OIWCA, and uh, I'm here today with our legal advocacy team. Daniel Gonzalez is our legal advocacy coordinator. Daniel, hello. Hello. <laughs> and Leonella Hara is our legal advocate. Leonella. Hello. hello. So, um, first of all, Leonella, can you uh, briefly explain the types of services that you and Daniel offer at the YWCA? Sure. The legal advocacy program here at the YWCA offers services for victims of domestic violence with restraining orders, civil harassment, restraining orders, or assist and assist letters. We also reach out to more bigger population, including divorce and child custodies. Great. So, uh, Daniel. There's a new study out by the Institute for Policy Integrity at New York University of Law that states if domestic violence survivors have access to free or subsidized legal assistance, it can significantly reduce the rates of domestic violence, primarily through the issuance of restraining orders. What do you think about that study's conclusion, and does it speak to your direct experience as a legal advocacy professional? Uh, as a matter of fact, it does speak to what we do here at the Y, and I agree with uh, the main conclusions of the study. When people have access to, uh, to legal services, in specific, in this case, victims of domestic violence, they, uh, a window of options opens up for them and, and it gives them the opportunity to seek for alternatives and not stay in their abusive relationships. So when people don't have access to these services, they're trapped, they have nowhere to go. So when you open that, that door, when you open that window of, of opportunity, uh, people can get out and people have options uh, and they most of the times decide to stay out of, of, you know, of an abusive relationship or to leave their partners. But even when they don't leave their partners, I believe that when, when you have these options, it, it, it strengthens a woman's uh, ability to decide what she is going to do in the future, whether she decides to stay or not. So I definitely believe that, that um, the availability of legal services is a big, is a big factor in, in lowering the rates of domestic violence and, and the impact they have on women that suffer domestic violence. So I definitely agree with that. And, and you know, we see it every day here at, at our program. So, so you know, in, in, in essence, I agree with this, the study, and we see it every day. Uh, Thank you. Redundant. Sorry about that. Leo, from your experience, uh, what role does uh, a legal advocacy support team play in reducing the incidence of domestic violence in the clients that you see? I think our role is very important as legal advocates when we're assisting victims of domestic violence. Um, a lot of the times we're the first person to go to um, either if they're looking for a restraining order or if it's counseling and when speaking to a legal advocate, a lot of the times we have to bring awareness to them and let them know that they don't stand alone and that we're there with them throughout the whole process. And sometimes that's what they need in order to make that decision, a decision that's going to change their lives. So I think we, us helping them and making that decision is helping them either in obtaining a restraining order or civil harassment restrainer is going to change their life and is going to reduce domestic violence within our community. Mm, I couldn't agree more. And I think... You all do it uh, better than anybody else in the county, certainly. Thank you. Daniel, what are some of the, the uh, economic benefits of providing subsidized, sliding scale fee-based legal assistance to survivors of domestic violence? Well, I think that the, main, the main benefit survivors of domestic violence get from, from you know, the main economic benefit, if you were, is the availability of services at a low cost. I mean, attorneys are great partners in the community, and they do a great service, but Let's face it. Attorneys charge, you know, great amount of greater amounts of money for services, not just family, but domestic violence also. So to to be able to provide these services at a lower cost and make these services available to to people that don't have the resources to pay for an attorney, I believe is a one of the greatest economic impacts and factors in in, in this. Also, one of the things the study mentioned about uh, economics uh, and domestic violence was the fact that um, victims of domestic violence tend to miss work, tend to miss, um, they, they are in the hospital, they're receiving medical treatment. The expenses that come with that um, are, you know, a big economic factor in these families. I mean, paying for medical services is not cheap, and we know it uh, in our day and age. Uh, missing work, is, you know, a day of work sometimes for these families is, is great impact. You know, missing work because you have a black eye because you have bruises or because you were in the hospital, you know, because of that. 
So, in, in the economic impact, I mean, domestic violence does have a great, great impact in, in, you know, in these victims. But, you know, if you reduce the rates of domestic violence, hence, you know, you reduce the economic cost of, of being a victim of domestic violence or suffering from domestic violence. Those are, I think, the economic factors that I see play out in, with our clients and in, in our personal experience here in the agency. But I think the greatest one of all is to make these services accessible to, to people at a low cost because that is, I think, a great, the greatest hurdle. And we see it every day here with our clients. That's an interesting um, perspective that you point out too is, you know, the costs associated with missing work, um, perhaps missed childcare. Those yes. are um, societal economic burdens too. So yes. I guess I, I, I see the work that we do as, you know, providing economic services for the um, entire community uh, as, as a well. cost savings. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, you know, the, the mental health, you know, mm -hmm. counseling services, uh, mental health treatment, all the all the things that are related to trauma that are related to to the domestic violence, those are also those also factor in the economic piece, and you know, that is something that needs to get, you know, looked at as well. That's a good point, Danny. What advice would you give to survivors of domestic violence living right here in Monterey County, who may need help, such as a restraining order, or a cease and desist letter, divorce, or child custody? but who may not know where to turn to for help and who cannot afford the thousands of dollars that a, an attorney may may charge, where, how would you suggest that they find help? I would like to um, let them know that there are options available where they can get help at a lower cost. Uh, even though we don't provide uh, attorney work per se, we do provide legal assistance in, in preparing uh, paperwork. And there are... Um, our agency is ready to serve those who are in need of these types of services. We also provide an array of services that other organizations aren't able to provide. And therefore, when we give you know these options, a victim of domestic violence has a comprehensive, uh, you know, has comprehensive care. Not just we don't just treat one area; we treat different areas that the person is where the person is going to receive the services, such as counseling. Uh, refuge and the legal assistance piece. So um, one thing I would like to say is, you know, don't be afraid. Come out. Uh, you're not alone. There's a lot of people in this community that suffer from domestic violence. I would think that coming out um, shows tremendous uh, strength and bravery. Um, did I just make up a word? Bravery? Yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna to have to edit that piece. I will. But tremendous strength and um, bravery, because you know, a lot of the times the main excuse victims will st will tell us, the reasons why not to act, um, are usually related to um, to their economic well-being, their dependency on financial matters, their kids, their children. But when you decide to take that step, and you decide to take care of yourself you are not just being strong for you, you're being strong for your family, you're being strong for everyone, uh, uh, not just you, but all the other women that are around um, in this community and because you're gonna be an example for them now. So I would definitely say, take, you know, take the step, look for help. There's help available out, out in, in the community. Um, you know, we are here to help and in any way we can. So just, you know, Hang in there. <laughs> I Thank you. Um, Leo, how, if somebody wanted to uh, schedule an appointment, how would they do that? You could call the YWCA. The telephone number is 831-422-8602. You can either ask to speak to me um, or to Daniel um, to be able to schedule an appointment, and we will be gladly to assist you with that. Last question. What do you love most about your job, Leo? The most important thing that I love about my job is helping the women, empowering them to making that change in their lives and getting them that safety that they need for themselves and their children or their family. How about you, Daniel? I think what I most like about my job, I've always been a person that likes to help people that have extraordinary circumstances or situations happening in their life. And when I, when I started working here, I really learned the impact that we can have in our community um, it's it's really 
it's hard more heartwarming, you know, when you when you know that you really help somebody overcome the um, the pain and the grievance of, of being in a in a relationship that's abusive. Um, I we've seen well, we see our clients, and when you come out and they see you in the street and they say thank you, and they come to you and they give you a box of strawberries or they give you a hug or they give you a handshake, and and you see them doing well, you know, you see them happy or you see them with their children in, outside of their abusive relationship now and they, they were able to move on, I think that is my favorite part of it. You know, when you were able to, to see that, that difference or that, you know, significant change that you were able to help these people achieve it. And we really don't do it. They do it themselves, but we, we really provide the help. I mean, just kind of the direction, but they really do it themselves. And that's what I really like, when you're able to give that person the power to change their life and their circumstances. There you go. YWCA Monterey County's legal advocacy team, Daniel Gonzalez and Leonardo Lajara. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.